Hi, welcome back to another experiential lit video. Earth, the planet that we all call home, is the only celestial object to harbor and support life in the universe. It is a fact that 21% of Earth is covered by land and rest 71% is covered by water. Most of it is salt water. We have covered in depth about fresh water in our previous video. I'll add the link for you below. Earth's climate has changed throughout its history. Thousands of years, also known as glacial period, have marked their advancement and retreat. The last decade or so, climate change has been in news and bagged much needed attention from us. We usually think of climate change in the context of more flooding, more intense hurricanes, and rising sea levels. But some areas of the world are forecasted to get drier and hotter as the climate warms up. People are calling it the crisis of our time, and certainly it has become one. It's widespread, rapid, and is intensifying year on year. Some are using it for political mileage, and others for better reasons. But today, in this episode, let's take a look at climate change with evidence and what are we doing wrong, its effects on our life, and will we ever be able to fix it? Let's get on to it. I am going to start with a question. How do we know climate change is real? With new technology, along with Earth orbiting satellites, have enabled scientists to see the bigger picture. Further to this evidence, perhaps ice cores drawn from Antarctica have given us the timeline to present day's global warming crisis. Now a new study uses those observations to see within the ice sheet, laying bare a tale more than 100,000 years in the making. When we look inside an ice sheet, we can see distinct layers formed by thousands of years of snowfall. As snow accumulates, these layers get progressively compacted into ice, which then flows under its own weight. To get a precise history of a particular spot on an ice sheet, scientists drill into it and recover ice cores, which provide a record of the ice's age and what the past climate was like. Seasonal variations, along with ash from volcanic eruptions, show up in the cores, allowing us to date the ice and correlate samples from different sites. To extend this age information across the ice sheet, the best tool that we have is ice-penetrating radar, mounted on aircraft flying low over the surface. Radar transmits electromagnetic pulses into the ice and records the reflected signals, allowing us to track the depth of the layers detected in the ice. Since 2009, NASA's Operation Ice Bridge has flown over Greenland more than 100 times with a wide variety of instruments, including radar, and produced vast quantities of data, adding to the work from many other missions. This has allowed researchers to generate a three-dimensional map depicting the age of the ice throughout the Greenland ice sheet. This 3D age map shows that three distinct periods of climate are evident within the ice sheet. The Holocene, shown here in green, the last ice age, shown in blue, and the Eemian, shown here in red. The top layers from the Holocene period form during the last 11.7 thousand years and are fairly flat and uniform, though the thickness varies depending on how much snowfall occurred. Below this, deeper within the ice sheet, we see layers that form during the last ice age. Layers from this period are darker and more complex, having been further squeezed and sometimes folded as they flowed over the rugged bedrock below. Deeper still are layers of ice left over from the warm period before the last ice age, more than 115,000 years ago. Eemian ice can reveal how the ice sheet responded to a period of warmth similar to the one we are experiencing today. Several ice cores have recovered Eemian ice, but it is difficult to interpret. This new map of the age of the ice sheet shows that there is more Eemian ice than expected in northern Greenland, where it may be easier for scientists to collect and analyze. This new analysis reveals a 3D map of the age of the Greenland ice sheet, from the oldest Eemian ice 
to the layers deposited during the last ice age, to the ice that formed during the Holocene. The response of the ice sheet to past climate change led to its current age structure. Further study will help us better understand how the Greenland ice sheet will respond to today's changing climate. Look at this graph, letting us know the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere over thousands of years to the point of this recent spike in carbon dioxide. It's the year 1950, which marked the inception of industrial revolution. From this year on, we haven't shied away from breaking records of carbon dioxide and have never stopped ever since. Scientists say with no doubt that human activities have mainly played a major role in causing this and we are proceeding at the rate that has no parallel, possibly 250 times faster than average climate change during the past century. If we take a closer look, the planet's average surface temperature has risen about 1.2 degrees Celsius. The Antarctic ice sheets have decreased in mass and losing tons of ice year by year. Glaciers are retreating almost everywhere. Take a look at disappearing snow on Alps and Himalayas. All this is leading to global sea level increase with severe weather patterns. The West Antarctic side, we are seeing strong thinning on the ice shelves, which is causing drawdown on the inland ice, um, on the grounded ice upstream. Most of that is being caused because of uh, changes in ocean heat flux underneath the ice shelves, which is causing them to thin. And then consequently, the buttressing force is being lost against the grounded ice, and the grounded ice is then flowing faster into the ocean and causing sea level rise. Over the last century, we've been burning unprecedented amount of fossil fuels like coal and oil, which release carbon dioxide to power our cars, homes, factories, planes, and in turn, increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Today, there's a lot more of us now to support our population growth. We are clearing lands for agriculture industries and deforestation has increased greenhouse gases. Our sun is the fundamental source of energy for all living things on earth. But when sunlight passes through the greenhouse gases in the air, some heat gets trapped and our planet gets warmer. These gases in our atmosphere have skyrocketed in recent decades, causing severe greenhouse effects. The Earth has gone through warming and cooling phases in the past, long before humans were around. But today, the Earth is 1.2 degrees warmer. But the concern is not that Earth is getting warmer, but is happening at a much faster rate than ever before. Though our planet's forests and oceans absorb greenhouse gases from the atmosphere through photosynthesis and other processes, these natural carbon absorbers can't keep up with our rising emissions. As we see now, we are already getting to see the consequences of climate change. Climate change has increased drought and wildfires, declining water supplies, reduced agricultural yields, and flooding with erosion in coastal areas. Regions that face the wrath of climate change have lost financially and loved ones too. It is estimated that when global warming reaches 3 degrees Celsius, cities like Osaka, Alexandria, Miami, and many others will have to start packing global sea level rising and other factors 
will force millions of people to be affected with trillions of dollars of assets at risk. This is not too far away. It might happen in my lifetime or yours. It is estimated in 50 to 70 years from now. With climate change evidence and consequences, our world leaders have taken climate change seriously by signing Paris Agreement. 197 countries have taken part in the agreement. That's nearly every nation on Earth. But what is Paris Agreement? As we all know, climate change is a global emergency that goes beyond national borders and requiring international cooperation. It's a pledge by all countries setting long-term goals in limiting the increase of global temperature below 2 degrees Celsius, preferably to 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2100. Countries set their own emission reduction targets for a 5-year cycle, overall reducing at at least 40% by 2030 compared to 1990. We have taken the right step forward, but the reality of this agreement has fallen short. While protesters rallied outside the White House, Paris lit up its city hall in green light in response to President Donald Trump's announcement to pull the U.S. out of the Paris Agreement on climate change. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. Scientists say the rollout of the agreement must be stepped up to have any chance curbing dangerous climate change. Today, carbon dioxide emission is still increasing rapidly. Countries are still heavily investing on power plants that use coal and natural gas. The world is on track to produce far more coal, oil and gas than that would be consistent with limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius target. End of the day, it's all up to individuals like us. We can be part of climate change solution. Perhaps we can contribute by just talking about climate change in our circles, by spreading awareness and moving to renewable energy. We all have to make the change sooner or later. If not, climate change will make one for us. All right, that's about it. If you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing. You can find our other video links in the description. You can support us on Patreon. You've been watching experientially. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.